this preacher, he's going to come in his own way, read his own scripture, and all he needs you to do is say amen. amen. And uh, your amen is just mean a whole lot. Amen is to a preacher is like a person telling a dog sick. Yeah. So when he say anything and you know it's the truth, just say amen. Uh, Y'all done got to start to uh, Amen. Amen. I just sit there and thank you for being a cheerleader. I'm glad you come and you ain't ashamed to say amen. 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 All right, I'm going to ask Brother Cotton now to come in his own way. Amen. 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 Verse 2. 
Romans chapter 12, verse 2. If you have it, say, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. And it says there, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Say transformed. Transform. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Lift your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Stand firm. Stand firm. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Stand firm. All right, Stand firm. But our scripture passage, Galatians 5 and 1, our main scripture passage here, stand fast. Therefore, with the liberty of this, jumped in my spirit as we were Many of you were celebrating, many of us were celebrating Juneteenth this past week. And the freedom that we got as slaves. And I know that a lot of people uh, are familiar with it. But there's something you must realize here about the freedom. If you know the story there in Texas, the Emancipation Proclamation was done in 1865. But the, uh, but the word did not get to the, all the slaves there in Texas. So it was a year or two later, they were still bound as slaves and didn't know they were free. You will get that in a minute. And so they had to send a word, and it was on June 19, 1867. Some say 66, some say 67. But it was about a year or two later that they got the word, y'all know y'all free? Somebody said, do you know you're free? Yeah, you know you're free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you, see, you understand something here? Is that if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know that God has called you to be different in your attitudes and your actions. All right. All right. Uh huh. The word Romans 12 and 2 says, don't copy. Another verse that says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. All right, all right. But let God transform you into a new person Amen. by changing the way you think. Yeah. Right. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I want to let you know, since, uh, Christians, some Christians live as if this verse is an optional extra to their lives. Their behavior, their actions, or their inactions are no different to what the world says is permissible. But God says it's unacceptable. All right, all right. Born again believers and disciples of Christ are meant to be different. Oh, yeah. Different in the way we live, different in the way we act, different in the way we think, different in the way we talk. Oh, and so uh, our focus is not meant for us to be on our wants, needs, and desires, but our focus is meant to be on God. Amen. All right. His good and perfect plan and purpose for us. You see, we are not meant to be indistinguishable from a believer. Uh -huh. We are not meant to be bound by our sinful desires. We are not meant to disobey God's call and purpose for our lives. Okay. There is supposed to be a difference. Yeah. Oh. Look somebody say, stand firm. Stand firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, are you allowing God to change and transform you? Uh, are you allowing God to change and transform the way you think? All right. Can you allow God to bring a change and a difference in your life? All right. All right. My brothers and sisters, God has called us to live differently. The Holy Spirit is able to work in us and through us to bring change and transformation. God has called us to live lives that are holy and acceptable unto him. All right. Look at our scripture there in Galatians 5 and 1. It says, stand fast. It says, in another version it says, it is for the freedom of that Christ has set us free. All right, all right. So it says, stand firm and don't let yourself be burdened. Again, by the yoke of bondage or the yoke of slavery. All right. See, when we come to Christ, we are free from the consequences right. and the burden of our sin. Right. We are free from the punishment of our sin. And our sin, our sin deserve because Jesus has paid the price. Paid the price. For our freedom. Yeah. Now that does not mean we are free to live as we want. All right. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Our daily lives should be for honor and glory to God who has died to set us free. All right. And you must understand many in the modern world think that what we believe about God, sin, and salvation in the Bible is pointless. But we know the truth. 
Christ died to set us free. Yeah. Uh, people can talk about the Bible and whether it's accurate or not, but there's an old song that says, I know the Bible is right and somebody's wrong. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The foundation of our faith is Jesus and Jesus alone. The world may attack our faith. The world may dismiss our opinions. The world may think we are crazy for following the ways of God. But we must dare to be different. Yeah. We must dare to stand firm in our faith. Yeah. We must dare to proclaim the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Right. We must dare to proclaim the word of God. We must dare to share the truth of the gospel with those who are headed to a lost eternity in hell. When was the last time you shared the gospel with somebody who was saved? All right. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you told somebody about the goodness of Jesus? All right. We got to share to a dying world. We're living in a world now where all kinds of things are going on, and we got wars and all kinds of wars going around. We got to share that Jesus yeah. is the light of the world. Yeah, man. Years ago, years ago, years ago, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatian church to encourage them to stand firm in their faith. Yeah. All right. To stand firm in the truth. Listen to what he says in Galatians 1 and the New NIV verse. He says, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting the one who calls you to live the grace, the life, live in the grace of Christ. And you're turning to a different gospel. Somebody said different gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is really no gospel at all. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, see, there's all kind of little, little doc doctrines out there now. And if you don't know the word, you'll follow anything. Oh, but you got to follow the gospel, the Bible, the Bible. Evidently, some of you, this is what they said in Galatians 1, evidently some people are throwing you into confusion, trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are an angel from, even if an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one that you know they are cursed, yeah. Did you know that? Uh huh. That's why you can't watch everybody on YouTube. That's right. You can't watch everybody on TV. You better know what they're preaching. He said, anybody who preaches anything other than the gospel, let them be under God's curse. As we've already said, now I say again, if anybody's preaching you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. This is Paul talking to the church of Galatia. And he said, he said here, and I, am I now trying to win the approval of people and human beings? Or am I trying to approve, win the approval of God? Oh, am I trying to please people? Or am I trying to please God? All right, all right. If I was trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. All right, all right. Remember, you spoke that word to me today in that yeah. text you sent me. You can't please people, you got to please God. Right. Yeah. Now, some of you who have responded in faith, we're no longer standing firm. Somebody say stand firm. Stand firm. They had allowed those themselves to be fooled into following the words of men who denied the message of salvation by grace and through faith. They had allowed the foundation of their faith to crumble and arose uh, instead of standing firm. Now notice this, notice this. After Paul had left Galatia, false teachers came and spoke against Paul. Yeah. And his teaching. The false teacher undermined Paul's authority and even attacked his theology. That's right, that's Paul is in fact the only way of salvation is through the grace of God shown by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. That's it. So Paul wrote to Galatians 3, you can read it later. He said, You foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you, in other words, who tricked you yeah. Yeah, uh, before your very eyes was killed and portrayed as Christ. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? Or believe in what you heard? Or are you so foolish after beginning by means of the Spirit? And are you now trying to finish by the means of the flesh? In other words, he said, you had it right. And as you went on this journey, you allow people to persuade you. And for people to cause you to go off track. All right. You were happy when you were serving the Lord. And you, couldn't, you couldn't wait to get to church. And now you can't hardly get you to church. You should, you should read your Bible and read my Bible, pray every day. Now you don't even open the Bible unless you're on Sunday. Uh, what happened? Look at somebody say, what happened? Uh, yeah, what, 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 what happened? What happened? What happened? You should be put on your glad rags. Now you come in looking like you're down and out. Uh, uh, but you got to understand that God 
has completed his work of salvation to save us from sin. Christ has come. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ has ascended. And Christ is coming back. Jesus Christ is Lord. And by repenting and turning to him, we are forgiven. We are free from the burden of sin. We are saved. Look at your neighbor and say, we are saved. Come on, if 